Hello and welcome to the Heresy Lodge. I am your host, Dylan Cooper, the constant coast over here. Gavin Franklin. Guys, we are here this week to review the first wall, which isn't really the first wall. It's a, the first, it's not even the first space station. It's a it's space station. A space station behind a smaller wall in but front of a bigger it's wall. It's the first wall of Dorns that he put up, I guess, but not really because they would you not consider what happened at Jupiter like a wall? I don't know. I don't know. Dorn <laughs> says it's his first wall, which makes me very concerned about putting him in charge of defense. <laughs> <laughs> sir, that, sir, that's not a wall. <laughs> Imagine being a guardsman during that battle. This is just the first ball, Port Rabo. And you're like, fuck, like, is this guy okay? He's in charge. Is, this is a space station, dude. <laughs> Do you know where you are, man? <laughs> I know you look like the old man, but damn, you really got the dementia early, didn't you? Uh so this one is by John French. No, this is no. Gap Thorpe. Gap Thorpe. His name's Gavin. How did I not know that till I, now? I, never, I feel like I did. I didn't. I just kind of figured his parents called him Gav. I don't know. Gavin. Gavin Thorpe. There mm. you go. Great name. Mid at best. Mid. How <laughs> mid of you? <laughs> As the kids uh, would say. <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, what the fuck are you drinking? <laughs> this is a weird one. I was literally like, Jesus, like, I, what wine do I have here? Because I've been drinking all week, honestly, <laughs> all, all weekend. Um, and I saw a mead. And I was like, "What? Where does this mead come from?" Um, so I, it's a cherry mead. Man, it's a, it's a syrupy mead. It's pretty syrupy. Not the most uh, syrupy, but it's kind of syrupy. So it's a little tough to drink. You know what's crazy? I literally, a week and a half ago, I was at a brewery. I was like, you know what? I'm going to get a growler for the podcast. And I did. And then I left it at my mom's. <laughs> <laughs> Which uh, brewery? It was one. It's it's one on the on 135. I don't know how often you travel. Not 135, sorry. Uh, 65. So you're going between Louisville and Indianapolis. It's called o OCR. I really heard that one. There's like one sign as you're going down this interstate. And as you exit, it's not there. I looked. I've been, I was driving around <laughs> cornfields for like 10 minutes. So like on the way up, Katie's like, oh, there's this winery in the middle of nowhere. So we went there and they Wait, had a brewery. What's the name was, of the winery? Oh, God. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I need to know. I need to know. <laughs> so I then need the, to know if you went to the same podunk winery that I've gone to. Uh, it was definitely not very podunk. It was like uh, mine nice was very winery. podunk. Yeah, and like it had the brewery. And I was like, why is this here and not three <laughs> exits up the road? She was like, yeah, I don't know why we have that sign there. <laughs> cool. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah um i don't know i don't know what it's called i'm gonna have to do some some do more some digging, research do some research <laughs> well, it's like not even popping up what are you drinking i am drinking from voodoo ranger which i have been to their brewery in pittsburgh and it's pretty good the food was good too you went to uh, voodoo ranger that's pretty mm -hmm. cool yeah it's actually pretty close to uh the stadium so before oh, the game goodness. we stopped there and ate had a drink but this is the Fruit Force Fruit Punch IPA. This is actually really good. It's really that good. sounds really nice. Nine and a half percent. So by the end of this episode, I might be a little, a little frisky. Chateau de Pit. One de Pit. Mm. Chateau de Pit. Never been to that one. Yeah, it's really nice actually. It's in Seymour. Probably why I've never been. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. As always, guys. Hit us up on our Discord. You find that pinned to our Twitter at Heresy Lodge. You can email us at the Heresy Lodge at gmail.com and tweet us. Wait, I already did the tweeting. Right? Tweet at us, Heresy Lodge. Discord's on there. Um, we have merch. I am drinking out of my pint glass. 
Gavin's repping the sweatshirt. Buy some shit. Feed my child. Um, oh, Gavin was so disgusted by his sweatshirt that he turned it off. So maybe don't feed my child. I don't know. Oh, what's going on? <laughs> can you hear me all right? Yeah, I can hear you. Your webcam just turned off. <laughs> I keep getting like alerts on Zoom. It's like your webcam is turned off. Your headset is turned off. And I'm like, whoa, what's Everything happening? is off. Oh, shit. It's on. Florida it's Bravo off. has gotten through the first wall. <laughs> They've hacked my wall, which is something <laughs> you can do, apparently. <laughs> uh, allegedly, I did not know this was a thing. Hack <laughs> wall. Uh, so we got plenty in store today. We've got the first wall review, and uh, I've got some tournament drama. I played, drama. I played in the tournament in Tacoma. All all of my opponents were really good, except for one. <laughs> I can't wait <laughs> to talk about it. There's always one. Always one, right? Always one person. All right, let's start this. How do we want? Do we want to go through the storylines? Three big storylines, really. Yeah, they don't really yeah. converge. Let's start with the one that was the most confusing to me, and I just want to—I want to get your thoughts on this because we talked a little bit about this before the podcast, and you were like, "Way what? different." <laughs> <laughs> like you thought something else happened that never even happened. In I feel like. this is what happens when I have to do the audio version. And I'm like, I'm mowing and I can actually only hear like every third word because the mower is <laughs> so fucking not a loud. Way. <laughs> not a way to read a book. It just <laughs> what do I master? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, more master. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it <just> sounded amazing. <laughs> it was like a, an amazing, like replica of a lawnmower you should hear my lawnmower today they exact i've been practicing while it was knowing like, because it's all i can hear <laughs> it was pretty close to like drowning while listening to an audiobook but not exactly it was right on <laughs> thank you uh, maybe, I need, maybe i need to upgrade my airpods i think after they went through the washer they just don't get very loud anymore <laughs> oh, that's weird try washing them again maybe you didn't clean them enough. You know, <laughs> yeah what type of detergent did you use? Did you use AirPod safe detergent? You know, I don't think we did. Gotta get it. Gotta it get is one. It was a pod. It was pod oh. detergent though. You use pods on the pots. That should work. Yeah, I don't know why they got fucked up. Makes no sense. Hundred percent my wife's fault though. Uh, I would have I mean, checked the pants. Goes without saying. <laughs> I would check the pants. <laughs> You're the pants checker. Damn right, because uh, I know I leave shit in them. <laughs> yeah, no, like I've had that discussion so many times with my Just fiance. Check the pants. <laughs> but like at the same time, it's like, or I could put the clothes in the, the hamper. <laughs> well, they were in the two. hamper. You, just that seems like it's your problem. I don't know, man. You just got to check the pants. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like you've got some unresolved issues. I don't, I don't. <laughs> Look, I, I don't want to take too many sides here. All I need to say is you just give a quick pat when you drop a pant down. Just sure, give it a quick pat. pat. Well, Save some Air- AirPods, get a quick pat. Or use AirPod safe detergent, one of the two. <laughs> yeah, we just had the wrong detergent, maybe. But pods, pod, they, they made sense. So there's these humans. There are humans. They, from Africa. They're factory line workers from Africa. We're out in Africa. I don't know. Africa's pretty big. That's it's like, uh, I'm not quite sure. But they build tanks. They used to build trucks. I don't know. I think, that I think some of them build bullets now. Some of them build bullets. <laughs> and they build trucks and they build tanks. Who knows? All we know is they're now Imperial soldiers. And they're being shipped off to fight at the Imperial Palace. Now, they tons of stuff happened to them on yeah. this journey. A big piece is they get the like officers, but they're like discipline Compliance officers. officers. Compliance officers, yeah. And like they're ensuring that people are like loyal to the cause. Now, spoiler alert, 
you're already listening to this. You should know. They're all traitors. Which is, I sure. It kind of seems like the comp. This is where I so in the preview. Remember, I talked about. I was like, maybe there's some traitor guard in there. Who knows? I thought that they were a very loyalist faction. Yep. That over time, we're going to become traitors when they see the horrors of the new Imperium. Like the compliancy officers murdering people for not being compliant. Yeah. But... See, I thought they were going to be fine. It was the people they ran into that gave them a ride that were the traitors. No. Turns out they were... <laughs> And this is the thing that's confusing. The compliance officers, I think, were also traitors, and they were making sure people were compliant for Horus. <laughs> yeah. And the part of that that really makes a lot of sense is they were, like, murdering people who were part of the elect of the Vinicus. Yeah, it's true. They, they were, which would make sense because the Emperor's God probably on his side. Yeah, mm -hmm. not in Horace's rule book, even though Lorgar wrote it. No, there's some lines being cropped there. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> but the, there are also like confusing parts to this story that don't quite add up. Like, it's pretty evident that the rest of the Imperial forces don't know that these guys are traitors because. They're like hitching rides on railway stations and getting rides from tank squadrons and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, but they're also being like are taken to a place that's kind of remote. Well, it's hidden. It's like a yeah. hidden. But they're it's like a, a dorm. reserve force or something. Yeah, they're dorms. So it's reserve almost force. like some like weird like dorm like thirty five D chess is like. Someone's going to be a traitor. I bet it's these guys. Well, he does put them far away. That's a good point. Maybe Doran was like, your reserves for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, people from uh, jail, you go to the front lines. We don't care if you're a traitor or not. <laughs> you're going to die. Everyone else, we're going to bring you in slowly. Um, but yeah, like the rest of the Imperium definitely doesn't have an idea because like yep. they're, they ally themselves with like other Imperial forces. Yep. And at one point, they come under attack. Who do they come under attack by? I honestly thought it was like a stray missile. That hit the well, no. It's pretty obvious that Space Marines attack the force. There's like three planes that come down. They start blowing them up, and then they get away. But then they look back, and there's like Space Marines standing there. Like I said, I listened to the audiobook by mowing. <laughs> so my question is like a Marine. <laughs> there's I mean, there's only one. It has to be the traitors. It has to be like the traitors not getting the memo. We're not caring. Leave <laughs> this that trains. Alone. Yeah. <laughs> Probably just didn't give a shit. Yeah. So there's some murdering. They're like they're not given enough intel to know that train 47B12-4 potentially might be carrying some of their allies. So just nuke it just in case. Yeah, fuck them. Yeah, there you go. And then you get to this like point where they ally themselves with these tank squadrons. And uh After the main character walking, like a billion miles. It was a ridiculous amount <laughs> of miles uphill in the snow. <laughs> yeah. Literally. At one point, like the like the main characters. For them is walking to the guy I haven't felt my legs in days. <laughs> I'm like, oh, well, that fucking sucks. Maybe fucking I intense. Sit down. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, so they hitch a ride on these in these tanks, and um, she just fucking. She just fucks. She starts <laughs> fucking like Gap <laughs> Thorpe. It's like, yeah. like you know what you know what these books made. Guy. We yeah. need some fucking sex. It's like, it's, but it's, we're not gonna they're not gonna have sex. Like we're gonna like 
just make sure they're close and warm together, but not actually fucking. I want to. Oh, they fuck. Guys. They eventually fuck. Yeah, PT is it so long? Uh, but, we've been we've been laying in bed, but we haven't done the deed. It's really funny. I don't know. So, <laughs> um, there was that piece. She <laughs> was sleeping with this guy, and then at the end, she unveils her flag, and it is for the war master. Yeah, and then so I did not just. I so I don't know why, but I read this wrong. But I did. I did not realize it was her. So the guy she was sleeping with, neither did I. I thought Nasha was going to be a traitor because at one point, like they're talking in bed, he's like, "I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the War Master." So I was fully expecting him to be a traitor. Yeah, and like, I I was very confused too when I first read it. I was like, "Okay," I thought there was just like some random traitor elements that screamed out for the War Master. And then I kept reading the book, and they don't get mentioned again. I'm like, wait, what the fuck happened? Yeah, that's like the end of their story. So I go back, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, like, it was Zenobi. Like, holy shit, she was his traitor. Um, and I was reading in the um, end of the book how they have the afterwards comments. And there were some really interesting things. Like, he based a lot of this situation off of the horse heresy board game which is interesting because it's not a good game i've played it i've played the horse heresy <laughs> board game uh, i own it it's right there i'm looking at it right now um it's really complicated um and there is a part where like if you're playing as horus you can change loyalists to traders um and i think that's supposed to represent like what's going on here and then he also talks about how I'm trying to remember exactly the, the the thing that he says because it's about like how Dorn was expecting them, but he was also potentially expecting them to be traitors at the same time. Like you were kind of covering that, like maybe some thirty five D chess, yeah. <laughs> But he was really into the board game, <laughs> which I thought was kind of interesting. Weird. So overall, that story, I heard it was really bad, that portion of the story. Some, some, a couple people had told me like that was really his favorite part. And during the book, I didn't get that. That was fine. Yeah. But I mean, they were saying it was a drag. It didn't seem like a drag to me because of how the chapters were laid out. Because it was like three things for each chapter, and their story was pretty quick. I thought, yeah. And oh, at the end made it weird, but it was okay. Like it wasn't bad. Then let's talk about let's talk about my favorite story. Yefredi Keeler. That was interesting. It was um actually I'll tell you what, it started as my favorite story. And then it got really weird. It it did get really weird. Not in the sexual way. <laughs> nope. There was no children fucking this time. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> but um it got really weird because it got almost like word bearish, warp, magic, yeah. weird. And everything was a metaphor. Yeah, I also don't like that they tried to like pull in the kind of like what happened with Oilton and Solar War, this same thing kind of happened here. Where they were tricked by whatever and a demon comes out. Yeah, so Hewler and Olten definitely have the same plot line where it's like they believe they're doing the Emperor's will, but they're actually being tricked by Nurgle. Yeah. Which, it's any of the demons are going to be tricky. I don't see it being Nurgle. Nurgle's got to be straightforward. I mean, Olten wasn't tricked by Nurgle. She was just tricked by Chaos and Erebus. Yeah, because yeah, like they were pretending to be Healer. In yeah. Their dreams. But yeah, Nurgle tricked Healer here. And I just think it's kind of, I like the idea that like the Lecto Divinicus, because this is kind of a debate about it, 
well, let's let's back up. Let's talk about the story here before yep. we get into it. So at one point, Lilac does some weird stuff with a worm. <laughs> <laughs> he may not, or may not fuck the worm. Not sexual. <laughs> not sexual. <laughs> that we know of. <laughs> because all magic has a price. <laughs> And so then Abaddon just like watches them get like really fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> so the worm is like apparently a Nurgle thing, and Lilac's like, now the worm will go and devour every inch of corruption. Or almost fucking, I don't know. They got all word bearer on it. It was a really word bearerish moment. All you gotta know is chaos is corrupting. The Lecto Divinicus. The Tissio. That's what the guy kept calling it. The Tissio Divinatus. Yeah, whatever it is. <laughs> whatever your audiobook lawnmower. Tissio. <laughs> <laughs> so, at one point in time, a group of people see like a weird rotting on a wall. And apparently that freaks Dorn out. <laughs> like 15 people are like, we saw some weird shit on this wall. And he's like, we better look into that because I don't like weird shit. <laughs> Especially on my walls. Oh, like weird shit. Where did you say it was? On the Wait, 15th Are we wall? sure it's a wall? Which wall? <laughs> is it a space station or is it a wall? <laughs> Which wall are we talking about? Uh, so he goes and investigates they send Amen, a custodian there to investigate this wall disturbance <laughs> <laughs> he does the investigation part's really cool because he ends up teaming up with your Freddy Keeler yeah. and he hates your Freddy Keeler because he does not like religion he was there on Monarchia and like it just goes through this really intense religious debate about whether or not the Black Toad Kiss is a good or a bad thing. Malkador tends to believe it's a good thing because it could be strengthening. So I have a question to you. Do you think Malkador could be handing out Leticia Divinatus? I don't trust that that slimy little bitch. <laughs> I mean I think he could be. I think it I mean the theory is right that it empowers the emperor. Mm -hmm. That's what he said. Yeah. So I mean, I think he's pushing it. He obviously doesn't want them to stop. He tells is them like, oh, Killer, the... Killer's cool. Malkador is the peddler of drug that is religion across the Imperium. <laughs> Can I interest you in some lectures? That, and that's why Laura slapped him. He's like. You fucking been handing this book out, bitch. You think that Malkador told Lorgar? No, oh, maybe they were in cahoots. Now there's a claim. <laughs> That's an interesting <laughs> claim, sir. I mean, think about it. He seems to have the theory that it empowers the Emperor. Doesn't stop it. Obviously lets the most well-known at this point running around I think it's pushing it that's a rough one that would be a cool that's a cool little fan theory I I would love to look into the supporting claims on that I'll write some fanfic he yeah fucks killer in the end that's the <laughs> 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 that's how they get the readers there <laughs> oh okay also so, I really liked how Macador fights in this it was cool to actually see him fight he throws some fireballs out. He fucking shoots giant fire and kills a demon. Like, yeah, this, these are my bitches. It was pretty. It was pretty good. He fights uh, really well, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I would um, he's, he's like the second most powerful psyker. Yeah, maybe third with Magnus. They have a really cool like debate, Aemon and Valdor about like Aemon's like, listen, I was on Monarchia. I know this. All this stuff is bad, but Valdor's like, yeah, but I was also at Nikea. And yeah. Doran just let loose his psychers. So where does that leave us? Do we kill Doran? <laughs> yeah, which is fair. I mean. Yeah. And Aemon's like, fuck, well, good point. <laughs> and what else are you going to use to fight the demons, right? Because it's either random melee weapons 
or you're a psyker. Well, it became apparent though that the 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 specific group of the Electo Divinicus, the, the, whatever it is, it's your Divinatus. I don't know. They were actually worshiping Nurgle unbeknownst to them, which I didn't think was even like a thing you could do. Because yeah, like, that kind you, of how can you worship something that you don't think you're worshiping? And like it kind of defeats the point of giving something yeah, power. But I don't at know. first, like I didn't like get what he was picking up. But when it was like, you know, what would it say? Like the Emperor's like death and something else or something like that. Death and life, maybe. And that's where yeah. like, Amon was like, wait a minute. That's not the Emperor. I fought with the Emperor. He's not death and life. And then yeah. a Nurgle came, or a Nurgle demon came out. Yeah, they fought the Nurgle demon. Um, a Freddy Keeler had to like, mentally dig out the worm and then she physically dug out the worm it was really metaphorical at the end it got yeah, really, it really yeah. intense but um, hey, but it was all because of cinderman that she found her faith yeah i do enjoy cinderman as a character i like yeah. keeler as a character i just i don't like the idea that they're being tricked by nurgle it seems very like anti the concept yeah um if anything like, it should be zinch yeah, I could see like like the the religious cults like falling prey to worshiping Nurgle, but like getting tricked by Nurgle in the worship. Yeah, and it, it's it made it seem like there wasn't even like a figurehead, like the person that was in charge of that group, like he also didn't know. Yeah, what well, were they called? Like the lantern, something. Light like, bearers. Point, yeah, light bearers, and at one point, like Killer banished a demon. With yeah, they just keep banishing him. They do so, it multiple times. How that turns into a neural demon. And then like at the end, she's also glowing as if mm -hmm. her faith in the Emperor. And Malkador's like, that's cool. That's pretty cool. Let's keep her around. She did some cool yeah. shit. Do you see her glow? Now, he also <laughs> makes Aemon like a protector of religion. He's like, if they cross the line, you kill them. And Aemon's like, all right, well, I'm, I'm going to go kill them. <laughs> 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 well all right you uh, settled it for me <laughs> yeah they have this moment where um Alcador was like hey you should add a name to Aemon's scrolls and dorn's like i have to go fight my brother so uh, why am i here <laughs> <It's basically, laughs> it was like a really drawn out like celebration of this one custodian and they suggested a name for him and i can't remember the name and i think it was supposed to be like a big reveal like somebody we know in 40k basically yeah i should i'm gonna look that back up because i yeah also didn't really get it but i also yeah so i mean toddler that or not toddler it's not a toddler yeah i don't think i had a screaming baby at the time man you have all kinds of noises <laughs> It's either a lawnmower or it's a baby or I'm just getting yelled at by something else. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, um, yeah, I think that is a cool story. It was probably my favorite story because the religious nuance. Um, and then we have the final story, which really has to do with the siege itself, the actual sieging of the first wall. And it's really between the Iron Warriors and the... Um, what should we call them? What are they called? Dorn. Oh my gosh. Iron Imperial Fists. Iron Warriors and Imperial Fists. That's it. The yellow people. Um Long Longinus. L-O-N-G-I-N-U-S. Long Genus. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Does that name <laughs> ring a bell to you? <laughs> no, it does not. Um <laughs> who in this story? by the way, really stood out to you at, by, at the end of it all, okay? You have the Iron Warriors, you have the Imperial Fists. Who stood out to you as their actual badass? Forks. Forks. He, uh, Forks it, he's a, a fucking badass. survivor. Yeah, and not only that, he makes a lot of fucking sense. So, beginning of this book, when we talked about in the preview... Forks was being a little bit of a baby. He was being a little bit of a politician. He wanted to get rid of Kruger. Honestly, he wanted to get rid of all like these people. Rabo. Yeah. Well, he was acting like Porter Rabo does now. And then at yeah. the end of the book, he acted like Porter Rabo used to be. Yeah. 
<laughs> it was genius. Forex really came out on top of this. So let's talk a little bit about how this story unfolded because I lost a lot of respect for certain space marines. Yeah, are you talking about the Iron Warriors or are you talking about the uh are you talking about Sigismund? So maybe I'm talking about Sigismund. Sigismund, uh he lost to Karn. I'm just saying. He got his ass beat by Karn. I, I mean I, Karn's my number two. That's pretty good. I think I would agree with that now. I mean, you can't just you can't deny facts there. I he also he's fought at Ingram twice and has survived both times. That's Demon and Nails version. It's pretty good. We're good. We're good. So basically, Porter Robo leaves Forex in charge. Uh not Forex. He leaves Kruger in charge, which is a really interesting choice. And his basic concept is Kruger Kruger's going to attack. Like Porter Rabo wouldn't. And Doran planned for Porter Rabo to attack. Yeah. Although we talked about this in the preview, like I both of the characters that they used here, Forex and Ron, are like very yeah. like not how their legion works. They're both like, All right, you see that wall there? I'm just gonna fucking bash my head against it until it breaks. I'm like, all right. Yeah. They're, yeah, they're basically Fafnir the same goes character. out. He goes out on the attack. So does Kroger. Like yep. <laughs> it was a, uh, it was a bloodbath. So at one point, Kroger, I lost a lot of respect for him because he talks with Karn and basically agrees to worship Korn. Ugh, that's not very Iron Warrior way. Yeah, I. We talked about this in the preview too. Like, it would be so much better to have a trade religion that's just very like, I don't want to fuck with that shit. And maybe it's the Alpha Legion. Maybe. Maybe. It would be really cool on the tabletop to see that. Like, you can't ally demons into the Alpha Legion, but they get their own unique stuff. Or I thought that would have been really cool with the Iron Warriors. Like, they get a lot more benefits to their vehicles. Um, That would be cool, but probably Even not the something Night Lords, like, I feel like the Night Lords would be, like, very, like, nah, man, demons are fucking weird. We're just here to kill people. Some of them. them alive. And Scrybox, like, let's do it. <laughs> Scrybox, like, I'll do take, a fucking demon if it makes me stronger. Take me, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll send the war for like 10,000 years and, it's, and just suffer. It's fine. Mm-hmm. So, um, Kruger sends Forex on a suicide mission into the spaceport. At the same time, he sends Volk to, to link up with the wall, literally. <laughs> he's, he's corrupting the wall now a Kruger's idea is actually genius like the, I, I never would have thought about this like in order to get Forex into the space station he basically takes like I don't know three four five hundred thousand people and throws them at the wall as they get slaughtered uh, but <laughs> there's like two three thousand space marines hidden in them <laughs> yeah and maybe a few hundred of them will make it through and that's what happened what a cool idea well, I mean, that's kind of how the Iron Wars think, right? Like, Dorn talks about this to Porter Rabo what, at the end. Like, he's like, you just throw your fucking people to slaughter. He's like, I don't give a fuck. Did it work? I'm through the wall, bitch. Yeah, and it did work. Um, Forex makes it in there, and it's a big suicide thing. He's fighting for, like, days and days nonstop. Yeah, it's like, we haven't slept in, like, 13 days. Like, everything's telling us, like, we're about to go nuts. Like, all of the alarms are on. <laughs> yeah, and he, he survives, and it's phenomenal. And I really um, like, too, like, he's, there's, like, a, it's, like, talking, he's, like, look, we just got to cut the fat, like, we're going to fucking run. Like, fuck it. Like, we're just going to get out of here. He's, like, all right, there's some iron wars over there. Uh, pair up, run. If you get shot, you die. That's pretty much what he <laughs> says. And several people get shot and die. <laughs> Um, really cool story. Love Forex's story. I love at the end when Porter Rabo comes down and he just kind of he delivers like two badass lines back to back. The first one, I don't remember the line in particular, but he's just basically talking about how like for years the Iron Warriors were just they hated the Imperium because they just like the Imperium would throw the Iron Warriors at like the shittiest problems and the Iron Warriors would just have to solve them. And then he's like, Poor Rabo's now doing the exact same thing to the Iron Warriors. He's like, fuck Porter Rabo. He's fuck the Chaos Gods. Fuck Horus. 
this is bullshit. And then he's like, all right, I'm going to go down and fight. And you have Volbron that's like, wait a minute, you're going to fight? And like the line that he delivered was great. He was like, I'd rather fight a crappy battle than none at all. It's basically <laughs> what he says. It's such a badass line that he delivers. So um, yeah, he goes down and he fights, but there's some more people there. You know, you have Kroger there, uh, you have Abaddon there. Um, you have Farn there who fights Sigismund, beats the shit out of Sigismund. Yeah, like fucking almost cut his entire leg off. I love this. So Sigismund during this process is being like held back by Dorn because Dorn doesn't trust him. And then at one point, Euphrates Keeler gets to talk to Sigismund in front of Dorn. What a great scene this was. Yeah, that was a really good scene. Where Keeler was like, hey, I need to tell you, Sigismund. And Dorn's like, don't you fucking talk to this guy. Like you fucked him up once. <laughs> Yeah, you corrupted the shit out of him. And so Sigismund was told by Euphrates that like he has to accept the emperor, he has to be the emperor's champion. And Sigismund, for some reason, takes this as I gotta fight Karn. <laughs> <laughs> and Karn's like, I'll fucking kill you. Karn's like, that's a great idea. Oh my god, <laughs> yes. <laughs> blood for the blood, God. Let's do it. I, that's genius. Yeah, do what the emperor said. That guy knows what's up. Um so Dorn calls Sigismund to fall back and Sigismund's like, well, I got to fight Karn. And Dorn just delivers. Dorn is a badass in this book. Yes. Dorn is a big badass. And like for a while there, I'm like, okay, Sigismund, he's right. Like he's being called by the emperor. But after this book and the things Dorn say to him, I'm like, fuck, maybe Dorn's right. Maybe this is all bullshit. Because <laughs> Dorn's like, listen, you piece of shit. You already backtracked. You you fled from a fight from this thing. And now you're going to disobey my orders and kill thousands of my people because you think that you're called by some god emperor. He's like, screw you, Sigismund. Like, I'm done with you. Like, you're trash. And I'm like, that's actually a pretty good fucking point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. And... Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, like, Ran off, we had, we've kind of glossed over Ran. Like, he is losing, he loses and he gets saved by Sigismund, who gets summoned by who gets sent over there by Dorn. And like, last minute, yeah, yeah. And like, at first, like, Sigismund's like this, like, badass, like, he's just fucking like kills this Terminator, kills a bunch of other people, and then Karn shows up and Karn's like, let's fucking do this. Karn really fucked him up. Is it, mm -hmm. is it the fucking cages, bitch? I'll fuck you up. I don't care. Yeah, that was a good time. And then you have um, Abaddon and Lyak come out. So this gets really strange. So so Dorn eventually joins the battle because the Iron Warriors have won. Porto Rabo's landed his flagship. Yeah, Porto Rabo's apparently coming they down. were tricked that they thought they were going for the bridge, but they were actually going for the the spaceport itself yeah which, which one? hold on what <laughs> yeah of course they're going for the fucking station <laughs> one thing that blows my mind is tactically it's like i i know they're just writers they're fantasy writers so i don't want to like dig into it too much but you know my mind's have like why don't you just blow up the station that's what i was i was thinking like when i was mowing i was like you know what would be super useful on the space station, a self destruct. Yeah, and like, the concept is like, okay, it's because they want the ultramarines to be able to land if they get there, and they want to evacuate the emperor if they need to. And I'm like, you need to start putting all your eggs in one basket. <laughs> how about you just put the things on the other side of the planet? You know. It's a big fucking planet. Just like the ultramarines. Go go to the other side of the planet. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's very or strange. The ultramarines can, can come from above. What if you did like a sideways angle twist? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Or they can my come thought. from like underneath. They can land at Antarctica and what if they up? 
Yeah. Obviously, they have to use sails. They don't have they don't have you know super powered engines or anything. They have to I sail. just figured it out. Hijack a comet. Perform a warp like ritual by murdering hundreds of people, and then open up a giant warp rift to summon eighteen million spaceships in front of Earth, and then we take it. That seems a little almost too far fetched, but I can get behind it. Whoever said that dumpling got promoted <laughs> at the the horse lodge meeting. <laughs> <laughs> what if Chuck only did this? Somebody get that guy a beer. <laughs> Jeez. Uh so. Puerto Rico lands. Dorne's going to go fight. But before they fight, Lalak tells Abaddon, he's like, you don't fight Dorne here. I die for you today. That was weird. Yeah. What was that? So Lalak dies. Who the fuck was Lalak? Not Erebus. No one knows. Just some fucking random up and comer. Do we ever find out? I would assume not. I'm assuming this is the end of the story. But yeah, like, what was that? Like, he came out of nowhere. Like, if he would have been like, like Argar Tall's like lieutenant or something, like, sure. Like, I, I would accept that. But this guy came out of fucking nowhere. Everyone kept talking about how they didn't know who the fuck he was. What was that? Where did he come from? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I'm looking through it. Why does he exist? Just the fuck with Abaddon, apparently? Yeah, he was not Erebus. I'm assuming I don't know. at this point, Lorgar, Erebus, and Corpharion are on their own little fucking planet making their own little fucking cult. Yeah. Like, I'm assuming none of them touched the siege. Yeah, I don't see anything in here about who he actually is. Layak. It's just a guy. What a downer. Very big downer. That should have been like a reveal or something. This mysterious character that you like hyped up as mysterious is just it definitely drops some like hints. Some major hints that it's like somebody yeah I thought you were on the money with Erebus but uh obviously not that sucks yeah what was the point what a why, why even introduce us to a new character yeah just use someone else there's like 70 million word bears I am 99% sure now we will never see the end of Nurek story yeah I'm I'm fully certain of it which is well. shit because that's the best word bearer we have <laughs> Yeah. So if he dies fighting Dorne and then Porto Rabo comes down. And honestly, like it's incredible. The, the speech between Dorne and Porto Rabo is so funny. Dorne like talks a little bit of shit to buy some time. And Porto Rabo goes on like a fucking rant. Like a <laughs> fucking like 10 minute. I've taken your citadel. I have laid you low. I've done it all by myself. And I have planned since day one. Dog, you are my mortal enemy. Like fucking forever. Yep. And Dorn just goes, yeah, but you're a bitch. <laughs> That's pretty much what he says. Yeah, this is just the first wall, man. He says, Dorn just goes, he says, yeah, but you had your men do it for you. It's literally yeah. what he says. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god. Whoa, how fucking geez. <laughs> Dorn <laughs> swinging hot. And then like Porto Rabo's like, oh, I'll get you before this day is through, Dorn. <laughs> I, I mean, I did like, like he lets like Dorn leave, basically, because 
they all have like, we have targets on it. And then he's like, I don't give a fuck. He's like, What's I some... will see you at the second wall. <laughs> I'll be there <laughs> at the third, too, with the fourth. <laughs> Mark my words. I don't, don't care how many walls you have. <laughs> I will be there. He gets to like the 150th wall. <laughs> no, I'm not I'm gonna be honest with you. <laughs> you have too many had... damn walls, but that'll <laughs> be at 151. I mean, it's just getting to be a little too many walls torn. <laughs> Maybe we could um just fight it out here. Can we <laughs> quit being pussies? I I agree. Fuck the walls. This is this is taking too long. <laughs> I'm exhausted. <laughs> I haven't slept in years. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Fulgrim's weirding me out over there. I just, it keeps just... trying to fuck me. How many more walls do you have? <laughs> <laughs> Please. I got the snake, I got the moth, and I got whatever the fuck Horus is, and then there's fucking Adam, and he keeps trying to kill me. Maybe we call it a 150. 150 is a good number. <laughs> <laughs> So <laughs> they don't fight. I do love like the pompousness of Dorne. He gets back in his like flight, his a ship, you know, and you know the captain's like, yep. sir, they're gonna blow us up. He's probably like, no, they fucking won't. A bunch of pussies. <laughs> they didn't. It's exactly what I thought. Just let him go. And then there's Forex. He's like, man, this is all bullshit. Porter Rub was an asshole. He's gonna kill us. This is dumb. Yeah. Um, and then the best part of the book happens right at the very end. Yes, my favorite character in a while has appeared. And I knew it immediately who it was, too. Like I kind of wish they would have left it open ended. Just you knew who it was? Yeah, as soon as they were I didn't like know. Well, he oh, was the like, words. oh, I can speak any language. Oh uh, yeah, then I knew. Yeah. Yeah. Then I was like, ooh, John Grammaticus. I kind of wish, like, I wish they wouldn't have said like who he was. I think I think yeah. they should have like ended on that note. Just like it's kind of a hint, but like not without saying it, you know? So like, yeah. kind of, it just gave it away too much. But John just floats on down, talks to someone some random Africa. person. Yeah, I think it was someone from Africa, yeah. And then he's like, oh, who are you? Or he's like talking to him. He's like, oh, you speak this language? He's like, oh, I can speak any language. That's why I was like, oh, ooh, it's John. John's here. And I really wonder what John's wanting to do. I mean, I'm pretty sure he just wants Horace to die. I'm very excited about John Grammaticus, but I was more excited about all. And I'm wondering now, like, what John's role in the siege is going to be. So I think it will be quite interesting to see if we start to get like a bunch of um, a bunch of perpetuals show up. Next I'm book is sure uh, in Saturnine. We're supposed to get a new perpetual. What's the next book? Saturnine. Uh, I think the next book is actually the Selenar book. Yeah, the Sons of Selenar and then we, Saturnine. Yep, yeah, and then Saturnine. Okay. Yeah, it should be cool. Raptor sent us the reading list. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. So I think that'll be a good one. Overall, this book was like, it was good. It was better than I Solar liked, War. I like this better than Solar War. I liked it less than Lost in the Damned. Very fair. I'd give it a six. There, yeah, I think I think a six is fine. There was never a single point in the book where I was like, whoa, this is great. And there was never a point where I was like, this sucks. Yeah, I'm not into it anymore. So it, it was it was a little bit of a slog because of that, because it's a big book. So it was just a lot of reading. It's a lot of reading. You should listen yeah. to it with a lawnmower. <laughs> it really <laughs> improves. All, it, it it goes so much faster because you can only hear every other word. <laughs> yeah. All right. Gavin. So tournament drama. Tournament this is what drama. I'm here for. This is what I live for live yeah. vicariously through you it's a fun one so um went to tacoma over this last weekend phenomenal event phenomenal tournament great great group of people i love the gw team that puts on their events they're always a blast uh there was a lot of video um, stuff streamed time out. nights did you 
win trivia. They didn't have trivia. What? Yeah. It's unfortunate. The, the reason they didn't have trivia, and it made a lot of sense, was because they typically have trivia on the second day, but there were so many people that signed up they had to have a shadow round. So they turned it into like a big party in the hall. Um, so That's I can see. Yeah. Um, okay. I took knights. Now, before everyone's like, oh, you power player. Two, I'm, I'm going to give you like a few facts on why knights <laughs> I think are, aren't I think as good okay. as you thought. <laughs> I think they're okay. First off, I did not bring like meta knights. <laughs> <laughs> I only, I was like, I got to go. I'm going to have fun with it. And I'm going to take what I can fit in my carry on. So I took four big knights, no armagers. That's not the way well, to play knights. How did you put them in your carry on? So I had one bag that was, that had the foam. Remember? Yeah. And then I put them in standing up. I was able to fit four exactly in the That's corners. Impressive. Yeah. And so that was my little carry on. I didn't realize the case. bag was that big. Yeah. It's that deep. Um, but barely fit them in like lengthwise and everything. Um, yeah, it was a, uh, it was a stressful time getting there, but when we got there, so first opponent I faced was Raven guard. And let me tell you, space Marines are so good. Um, they're so good. It's like, uh, it's just the doctrines. Yeah. Not only the doctrines, like it, here's the thing. This is the thing with space Marines is like, it's super opponent based. So Oath of the Moment is such a strong uh, ability. It lets you reroll all hits and wounds against the target. Just nuts. Pretty good. Yeah, especially when your opponent only has four targets. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, uh, Oath of the Moment just demolished me. Now, each of the games, like I, it, it was pretty close. So, like Raven Guard, he was able to kill my knight exactly, exactly. And the last turn, and that got him, he beat me by two points. It was 69 71. Did he do tactical or the other one? I think he went tactical. Yeah. I had opponents do mixed against me. So, some opponents went tactical, some opponents went fixed. Um, most assassinate and bring it down yep every opponent that went fixed i won against which i thought was kind of interesting uh except for one except for one no no every opponent that went fixed i won against which i thought was strange um and weirdly like nearly every opponent that went tactical against me um killed all my knights <laughs> <laughs> so i don't it was kind of weird um so first opponent, Raven Guard player, super awesome guy, really great, fun to play against, great opening game. I was exhausted. Um, I made a couple mistakes in that game. I will say, like, I think I lost it. Yeah, two hours of sleep from the previous night. So uh, I think I lost that because of some mistakes that I made, but he was a really good player too. And bring a Raven Guard. Like, I'm just so glad that Raven Guard are like doing shit. That's cool. And he had the Raven Guard character. And and Shrike, I think his name is. Yeah, it was really awesome to see him on the field and doing some cool stuff. Second guy I played against loved this guy. Uh, this guy brought Black Swag Templars. Master 69? It wasn't Swagmaster. Swagmaster <laughs> wasn't there. Oh, Black dude. Templars. I ended up winning this game. He was such a nice guy. Like, so much fun to play against. He offered me and my fiance a place to stay next time we were in Seattle. Like we saw him, yeah, multiple times throughout the tournament. He kept talking about how we were doing. Just like really great guy to hang out with throughout the tournament. Fun to talk to. Uh, third guy I played against was playing um, uh, Dark Angels. I lost this in Dark Angels. He had built a list that was very anti-Imperial Knights. A bunch of Hell Blasters? <laughs> no. He took a, a thing that gives you plus one. Uh, to hit, and another thing that gives you plus one to wound. That's pretty nice. Um, and he had, as long as you hit the target with it, and then he had full real set wounds. So it was like he got first turn, which was a big deal. And then he had two like anti tank tanks, basically. So I'm going to owe the moment that guy, I go plus one to hit, plus one to wound. 
<laughs> and then take two big shots from guns and then i just blew up and died Damn. that game was actually really close though yes he did keep splitting his fire um it, he ended up winning in the end um but it was really hilarious because what ended up happening was i would have like three knights and they all had like four health each and he had a unit of 20 health blasters in the middle so i'm like if i move you're just going to overwatch and one of my knights <laughs> is going to die. So for like three turns, I just stood still. I was like, I'm just going to stand still and shoot you. And he ended up like, he ended the game with a tank, a terminator and a transport. That's what he had left. That's all that was on the board. It's very bloody game. Really good. Time. Real close. Great opponent too. Like he took his time reasonably like he knew he was playing nice was like i'm gonna take some time to think i'm like yeah of course and like he just he was really like tactical like good player fun to play against learned a lot that was the first day second day more great games played played somebody from canada had a whole conversation with him about canada and the wineries and various places we can go to he oh dude he played thousand sons let me fucking tell you man kicked my ass <laughs> like this was the one that I a thousand lost. Suns next time? I lost, lost a thousand suns. This is how fucking thousand suns went. He goes, okay, I'm gonna shoot this knight with my mule vortex beast. Rolls six to wound. Oh, that's d6 plus six devastating wounds. Twelve devastating wounds. Great. <laughs> I'm gonna shoot you with Magnus now. You take eight mortal wounds plus four saves at minus three at three damage a piece oh my jesus christ so my knight dies <laughs> two units take down a knight I'm like all right well that was fun i bring three knights everything into magnus i did five damage yikes <laughs> yeah it hurt i eventually did kill magnus so that was good i got quite lucky on some rolls um and it was a bit of a slaughter too all he had left was some terminators so that was fun um. yeah he demolished me Magnus this is what Magnus says you play it right Magnus gets two free saves and two re-rolls on his save two up four up he's nasty nothing I could do about it Um. then we went into bracket at bracket Things got a lot more fun for me because my bracket <laughs> was really low. Like all the four opponents I placed, like going into bracket, other than like one, were good. Like they were good players. Yeah. And I was not, and they were Space Marine players. So they just like fucking demolished me with Oath of the Moment, basically, is what happened. So I played some Imperial Guard. Dude, Vindicare Assassins, the snipers. Yeah. I'm not even kidding probably did the entire tournament like 45 damage to my knights they were so yes. good and every single time i go to my opponent he'd be like well i've got a vindicare but they're really not that great i'm like that vindicare is gonna fuck me up i promise <laughs> you he's like no <laughs> no and then he does so i faced imperial guard vindicare in that game did around 20 wounds to me killed two knights two knights that's Jesus. the only two knights that died, though. He's the only fucking model that killed knights. And he had, like, two big-ass tanks. Like, the Rogel Dorn tanks. Yeah. That guy was great. So much fun to play against. We were just having a good time the whole time. Oh, well, I did get told. Like, my third game, by the way. Because I was just playing like I normally play. Judge comes up to me, just talking to me, talking to me about my models, because he liked them and everything. And then he was like, oh, you do know that... Um, it's reroll one hit and one wound, not reroll hit rolls and wound rolls and one is how we're playing it in this tournament. I'm like, ouch. Kind of <laughs> wish you didn't tell me that. <laughs> he was really funny about it. He's like, yeah, don't worry about it for your previous games, but that's the way uh, we're playing it here. Big nerf to Knights, by the way. Big nerf. That's like, right. yeah. They're not as powerful <laughs> with that role. And like, <laughs> There's so many other armies that are nuts right now, but then I went to Tau. Oh my God. So talk about the Tau? dynamics of armies. Talk about like, I saw some thousand songs. I'm like, they're fun. Tau are not fun. <laughs> I tabled Tau turn three. <laughs> they did 
four damage to me the entire game. Yikes. Yeah. <laughs> he was Yikes. super awesome of an opponent. Real nice guy. It was he had graduated high school. He had come for his high school trip. He was like just having a blast. He brought like six piranhas and a plane. It's like <laughs> the silliest list ever. So much fun to play against. Great time. Okay. That was third, second game, second day. Great time so far. Phenomenal. I go into third day, first game. Are you ready? Oh, I'm ready. I face an Ultramarines player. Was this your guy? This was the guy. <laughs> of course it was Ultramarines. Al- yeah, already, like, he had, like, two big anti-tank tanks. And oh, the moment, I was like, I know how this is going to go. <laughs> and, like, the mission that we were playing was, like, not great for me. So I was like, okay, I know how this is going to go, and that's fine. Okay. He starts the game by telling me about all these cool new rules that he found in 10th edition. And all of them don't make any sense to me. Oh, please explain. (laughs) So rules that he said, drop pods. Drop pods give cover to units. It's not a thing. <laughs> nope, not a thing. Drop pods don't give cover to units. Um, what were some of the other fun ones? Uh, armor contempt plus cover gives your Marines two up safe. That's not a thing that happens. Armor contempt isn't, isn't a thing anymore. It is a thing. It reduces AP by one. It's a stratagem. Okay, it's a strat. Yes. Mm-hmm. And cover says if you're getting, if you have a saving th- a roll of three, and you have cover, you can't use cover to bring your saving throw down to a two up against AP zero weapon. So if I shoot you with an AP one weapon, and you armor content it to AP zero, cover does not give you a two up save. It gives you a three up save. That makes sense. He came up with a rule that was like, if I charge you, I don't actually have to end an engagement range of you. That actually doesn't make sense. That's not a thing. How, how, what would be the point of charging? Yeah. Yeah, I know. That's Um, literally how you get to the fight phase. And like, there were all of these like, various different things that he kept making up. And like he kept trying to like get cover in the weirdest ways. I'm like, he, oh, for instance, another one that was like cover. He was like, if one model has cover, the whole unit has cover. It's like, no, like covers based off the model. So I would tell him this stuff, and he'd be like, that's not how it is. And he would like bring up a rule. Bring a judge. That's like, <laughs> yeah, he would bring up a rule that's like not the rule. Like <laughs> he was like, see. Models aren't visible if the whole model's not visible. I'm like that says nothing about cover. <laughs> it's not the cover <laughs> rule. So we, dude, I, it, what kills me? What kills me about this is like, I know for a fact that this dude was playing the whole tournament like that. That's how I felt about the Grand Knights player I had at Chicago. Yeah. Like when we tried to talk through things, like God damn it, this is fucking roll then. Like I don't, I don't fucking care. Yeah. And I'm like, this this guy, so I know for a fact, like, he's been, he's in a lower bracket, which is kind of confusing to me, because, like, I don't know how this guy just didn't, like, bully his way through people, because you can yeah. do that pretty easily, and especially, like, in the intro games. But he was, like, telling me, kind of, like, no, this is how it is. I'm like, all right, let's call a judge over. So I call a judge over, and I'm like, to answer a question, I'm like, why have you here? Here's three more. <laughs> we had a judge at the table for 40 minutes and oh, every shit. single thing this guy was saying was just wrong and hey, the man, dude was want, arguing <laughs> the dude was arguing with the judge about it forever and coming up with like oh, theoreticals about the it and then like he was like slow rolling the shit out of me Ugh. and i'm like dude I'm playing nights. Like you can take three hours and fifty minutes or two hours and fifty minutes to play your turn, and we're still gonna get done on time. And we did. 
<laughs> I'm like, it's going to take me 10 minutes to play my game. Like there, there's no amount of slow rolling that could slow roll a night player. Like it's not, I have four models, dude, <laughs> <laughs> with no command phase. <laughs> like only half of them fight. Like, trust me, this is going to end. So it was just awful. And he ended up winning that one. But man, was that one just rough. That was a rough one. I, yeah. I understand how that feels. Then we get to the last game, and this one was okay. I was facing a guy. The way they did their bracket system didn't make a lot of sense because I had lost my bracket at that point, right, because I did yeah. not go undefeated. But I went against a guy who did go undefeated. So I'm like, how are they doing this bracket system? That's weird. Yeah, it is weird. So he was like, maybe, yeah. Maybe, I maybe the, uh, whoever submitted the scores did it wrong like I did. I looked into both of them just to make sure. <laughs> they look fine. But – yeah, I'm li- literally playing this guy, and I'm like, okay, I could just give him the win so he wins his bracket, but that's not fair. You know what I mean? Like, that's not fair to some other dude that's actually trying to win his bracket, too. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm going to play this guy for real. And I think he was a little salty about that, which is weird. <laughs> yeah. He kept, like, making mistakes, and I would let him go back on it all the time. But then sometimes I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> like if he wanted to go back tur- two turns and move his tank so I couldn't get line of sight on him where I was. And I was like, well, then I would have just moved to get line of sight on him. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I don't know. It was it was a little rough one. And then there was a moment that was really awkward for both of us where like I had moved. I had gone into shooting. I'd done a bunch of stuff. And he was like, oh, do you mind if I use a strat in your movement phase to do something? And I was like, sure, like, go ahead. And he used it to, like, steal my back point. And I'm like, ooh, I probably, like, wouldn't have moved then. He was like, oh, it comes after your movement. And so I was like, okay, well, let's talk about this. Because, like, this happened, like, super out of phase. Yeah. <laughs> and I basically, like, I came up and was like, okay, like, one of my objectives was to hold my back line. So I'll let you do that, but let's say I score that. And he's like, well, that would be unfair. And I'm like, okay. He was right. Like, it came down to it. Like, it was totally fine. Like, I gave him the points for it. Like, looking back at it, it's whatever. Um, but when you do stuff, like, out of phase, you know, because you forget something and your opponent lets you do it, like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Like, maybe I have a discussion about it. I don't know. But – I understand. It all worked out. I ended up winning that one. I like tabled the shit out of some custodes. <laughs> it was <laughs> awesome. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was a fun. It was a great tournament. Let's talk about some of the winnings though. So um, custodes won tournament. Really? Two custode players in the final game. That surprises me. Does it? Doesn't surprise me. <laughs> Apparently it surprised everyone. Everyone's like, but knights are big. <laughs> No Knights players made it to the top four. Um, two Custodes, Eldar and... I was just an Eldar. Who was the fourth one? I want to say it was like Necrons. Really? Yeah, something really strange. Uh, I think it was Necrons. Or I can't remember who the fourth one was. Now, there were four Imperial Knights in the top 16. So I don't think they're a bad army. I'm not saying that. But like super mission specific, all kinds of weird stuff. Um, so yeah, I don't think knights are as scary as a lot of people think they are. I think yeah, if you're playing it sucks like it's melee armies. If you're playing at a local RTT with like bad tournament placement and a dude's playing like a buffed up knights list. Like, yeah, it's probably going to hurt pretty bad. Um, And I can see Knights, like, continuing to go up in points, and that's fine. But I think, like, the towering tax was a great way to handle the issue. Because, like, it still feels fun to play against, like, as a Knight player, but I'm not, like, rolling over things, (laughs) like, crazy amounts. And if it it does feel like I am, you're also like, oh, but I'm scoring points. Yeah. And you're not. Like, we played. And it was like a three-point game. It's crazy. It was. It didn't feel like that, though. It yeah, like it felt miserable. 
Yeah, I was demolishing you. Like, I didn't lose a single night. And you were down to like one strike squad and Caldor Drago, and it was a three point game. <laughs> yeah, although man, I I realized I fucked up so bad. Like I could have had all of my Terminators have a banner, which is plus one to hit, and all of them with the return one model if one died at the end of the phase. Oh yeah, chaos. I demons. could have had them all have that. Chaos demons was the fourth one. Oh, interesting. Yeah, chaos demons are interesting. Bellacore gives a uh, listen to this fucking listen to this fucking chaos demon list. This is gonna blow your mind. You ready? Yep. He's got twelve flavors, of course. Yep. Flamers still a thing. Yep. Here's the rest of his list: Bellacore, Shalaxi Hellbane, which I think is a keeper of secrets. Bloodthirster, Lord of Change, Lord of Change, Lord of Change. That's six <laughs> greater demons. <laughs> Yeah, sounds fun. Sure, whatever works. Bellacorg is a, a aura of you can't be shot unless you're within 18 inches of units split in the aura. That's pretty good. So he just probably puts all the Lord of Changes there and says, you got to come fight me. And then puts the Bloodthirster and Shalaxi in reserve. Yeah. Oh, that's a fun one. That sounds like a fun list of, like, I would love to run that list. It sounds so shitty to go up against. Yeah, I can't wait to finish my world leaders even if they aren't like great I, they still seem pretty fun yeah and then uh hopefully i'll be up in indy soon and uh we'll do some rtts or something yeah that'll be fun. is that it is that, is that your whole tournament experience there that's it that is it you guys just don't don't be super uh bullying about your rules and yeah, uh, that's, that's a dorm. yeah he got mad at me at one point because like I was trying to talk to him with the judge. He's like, let me talk to the judge. <laughs> Whatever you say, dude. <laughs> Damn, that sucks. The judges kept looking over at Katie like, how's was that game going? And she was like, <laughs> Poor Katie for being, being there for that. She said she loved it. And honestly, I, it makes a lot of sense because the games were short. Yeah. My games were like an hour long. That's hour and a half. Like tenth, I think. Games are ten. And nights real quick with nights. Either it's over, or it's over for one person really quick. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, great time. Loved it. That's it for us this week. We'll be back next week with our preview of the. We're gonna do both for Sons of Selenor next week. I don't know. We'll decide. Sons of Selenor, or we'll have to do Sons of Selenor next week, or a special episode. I think. Cool. We might we might do half and half. We'll find out next week we have to keep you motherfuckers on your toes <laughs> as always hit us up on discord find us pin to our twitter at heresy lodge email us at the heresy lodge at gmail.com uh, check out our merch buy something nice feed my child um if you are into tentacus check out pants of horse at discord.gg slash pants of horse and we're on youtube at the heresy lodge Check us out, guys. Have a good one, and we'll see you next week.